Matthew Irving, this is Margaret McTavish, my prize pupil. How do you do, Mr. Irving? A pleasure to meet you, Miss McTavish. Anyone who comes so highly recommended from the likes of Hannibal here must be as talented as she is beautiful. Well, I owe it all to Mr. Hannibal. Uh, speaking of which, um, here's your money. One hundred dollars. Oh, yes. Thank you. Ordinarily, I'd be a wreck spending so much money on myself. But this has been my lucky week. Oh, how's that? You'll never guess what happened. You married a millionaire? <laughs> I wish. No, I won a competition on the radio. Oh? Ah. I mean, me, of all people, I've never won anything before. What did you have to do? I guess the mystery tune. It was from Dreamgirls, which is my favorite musical. I guess that figures, really, you know, my being an aspiring star and all. <laughs> what did you win? It was great. I won this whole new wardrobe and lunch at a really posh restaurant. Um, it was called the Versailles. Do you know it? Yes, I've eaten there once or twice. It's great. It, it, it's the nicest place I've ever been to in my life. That was your first time there? Oh, yes. Are you kidding? Huh, I'd be lucky if I can afford yogurt for my lunch up yeah. until now. And would you believe who I bumped into when I was there? Roland Gilbert. <laughs> oh, I double wish. No, it was one of your students, uh, Melissa. Oh, really? Oh. Did she win a contest, too? No. She works there. Can you believe it? What a terrific job. I really envy her. I wish I had a job like that. What exactly do you do for a living, Miss McTavish? Well, what I want more than anything else is to dance. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll go and get changed right now if you're ready to see my audition. Absolutely. If you're as good as Hannibal says you are, I'm in for a treat. Go change and let's see what you can do. Tell me, uh, have you confronted your alter ego yet? <laughs> I'd hardly call him that. <laughs> you must feel like wringing his neck. Actually, I don't bear the man any ill will at all. He was a victim, the same as I. Well, it's a very noble attitude. <laughs> I will admit that the DVX is not high on my list of favorites, however. How did you ever become involved with such a degenerate bunch of cutthroats, anyway? I don't know that I'd call it involvement. Not unless it's being grabbed in your hotel corridor, injected with a drug, and thrown over a cliff constitutes involvement. What else do you remember about them? Nothing. That's it? Mercifully, yes. The next thing I can recall is reading that article in the newspaper. It's incredible. You lost, what was it, six, seven years of your life? Eight. Eight years gone without a trace, as if I didn't exist. It's a big gap. Well, I'm trying to fill that gap. That's why I came back to Port Charles. And Celia here has been helping me to pick up a number of the missing pieces. Well, you must have the puzzle pretty well put together by now, or you wouldn't be leaving. I've accomplished what I set out to. Hello. Hi. Well, we had an early shift today, and we did Oh, you seem a bit hesitant. You're not still confused, are you? Not at all. Um, is this a social call or what? Actually, I came to say goodbye. Oh, you're leaving town? Yes. That's too bad. We barely got time to be acquainted. Well, I think probably under the circumstances, that's the best idea. What are your plans? <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, I haven't any. I'm rather at loose ends. Well, it's a big world out there for you. Yes. It's ironic, really. You realize that after eight years, I finally found myself again, only to discover that I don't know how to deal with this new world. I haven't the slightest idea how to get on with this life that's been returned to me. Hello, Stella. Oh, Dr. Putnam. Come on in. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh, dear, I'm so glad to see you. Stella, is something wrong? Well, no, no, I wouldn't say that exactly. Is she all right? You know, um, see, you left me a, uh, a note saying that she was going to be up here having tea with Edward, Edward and Lila. Is she around? Yes, she is. Oh, good, good. I hope I'm not too late. Oh, no, they're all in there. Uh, all? Uh, what do you mean, all of them? That's right. You mean he's here, too? Who? 
Costello. You know, sometimes I swear that Jimmy Lee follows me everywhere I go. Oh, Jimmy Lee is in there. Well, then, who is it who's having tea with the quartermates? It's the, uh, it's the other you. What? <laughs> now, do you want me to announce you, or do you want to surprise me? No, no, I don't want Stella. As a matter of fact, don't even bother to tell them that I was here. Not that anyone would notice. It seems fairly obvious that I'm not going to be missed. Thank you. my gloves. I was going to ask you the same thing. Figured you'd be gone by now. No place to go. What, uh, something wrong? The band. Everything's changing, Gary. It's all different. It's all messed up. Remember when we started, when we all got together, a bunch of friends, you know, to play around? I mean, that was great, right? Yeah, it sure was. Well, then what happened? Um, you're telling this story. We lost it, pal. How? I don't know. It's... We got a glimpse of the bright lights or something. Oh, and you want to go back and be a garage band, play around town forever? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I want anymore. I just, I don't know. I just don't like the way it is now. It's, it's all messed up. Well, what's so different? Well, Amy and, and uh, Tommy, for instance. I, I miss them already, and I feel real bad about that. Yeah, so do I. Chris and Peter, man, we all do. But there's nothing I could do about it, right? I mean, you know, I, I had no choice. I either do it or die, right? Well, then why don't you just trust Steffi? She obviously knows her business. Oh, well, she better. If she doesn't, I'm in big trouble. Steffi, I hope you're as good as your word, young lady. Would you relax? Look, it's obvious that this Blackie guy doesn't want me around. I'm not denying that it's a touchy situation. This is a powder keg, and you've got me sitting on top of it having a smoke. You can't blame Blackie for being careful. You know, the chemistry of a band is always very delicate. He's worked very hard to make it what it is, and he doesn't want to risk losing that. Yeah, well, that's his privilege. It's not mine to put up with it. Why don't you give him a little time? He'll get used to you. Is it worth it? Would I have you here if it wasn't? Well, I hope not. You know I wouldn't. Frisco, you're on your way to the top. I'm right. But I'll keep my old address just in case for the time being. Do you want to dig ditches the rest of your life? Look, I want to make it. But I want to make it on my terms. You should be so lucky. You want success, and you want to dictate how you get it. It doesn't work that way. Look, Riff Raff is Parrish's band. I don't want to make waves with it. Well, you're going to, whether you want to or not. Why is that? Because you're good, and so is Blackie. You know, that kind of chemistry always creates a few sparks. But there's nothing wrong with that. Blackie's an excellent songwriter. And his material may be your ticket to stardom. Couldn't I just take another flight? There aren't that many. Look how long it took us to find you the right band. Oh, so I guess we stopped looking for other ones, huh? As far as I'm concerned. This is the sound we've been after, and Blackie's got it. Yeah, well, why don't you just buy it from him? Trust me. You give me one reason why I should. Because what's good for you is good for me. Aren't you forgetting someone? Blackie? It's just a reminder. I don't need reminders. If you say so. Unloving Stacy Donovan and Lorna Forbes, living in two different worlds, yet both loving the same man, Tony Pirelli, torn between his love for one. You have no idea how important you are to me, Stacy his desire for another. Tony, 
I hope you feel as special as you made me feel. Three young lives all caught in the search for romance. It's love, the oldest story in the book. On Loving Weekdays. Not a single thing. Are you drunk? Not yet. Just give me a little time. I guess you could say I took a wrong turn at the front door. Did you get the note that I left for you? Note? Oh, 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 do you mean this note? What's with you? Not the rest of the family. That's fairly obvious. <laughs> Am I supposed to know what you're talking about? I'm talking about your companion for tea. You were there? Yeah, I was there. For about 20 seconds. Just long enough to see what a marvelous time everybody was having without me. I can explain, <laughs> You know, see, when I came home, I was really... I was really dragging. But then I saw your note, and I thought, wouldn't that be lovely to have tea with Edward and Lila. Well, apparently our friend had the same thought. Why didn't you join us? Why? I was already there. <laughs> All you need is one Grant Putnam per party. It wasn't what you think it was. I know exactly what it was. I can't even talk to you when you're like this. He's pretty slick, isn't he? Who? Grant Putnam. No, not really. No? Well, he's slick enough to have fooled the Quartermains to have snowed them. You're drunk. No, but you are repeating yourself. Let's just talk about this at a later date, okay? You know, I just... I just wonder how soon it is that he's going to be moving in here. I mean, how difficult can it be to replace me? Hell, I replaced him. <laughs> At least he can do is return the favor. Not making any sense. No? Well, then why don't you switch to the other one? <laughs> you know, see, you really... You've got the best of both worlds. I mean, if you don't like the way that a conversation is going with one Grant Putnam, you can always start over with the Stop other one. Stop it! Two for the price of one. I just wonder how much time I have left. I'll bet the Quartermains are overjoyed about the prospect of my leaving, aren't they? It was fairly obvious from the sound of your little gathering that they vastly prefer the newer model Putnam. Grant, you're not going anywhere. You're wrong. I'm being phased out, see? I'm being pushed into early retirement. No one can ever take your place. No one's even trying to. Then what the hell is he doing here? He came to say goodbye. Sure he did. Grant, it's true. Grant Putnam is leaving poor Charles forever. Thank you. Listen, I would like to thank you both for your hospitality. You know, kindness here today makes me realize just how much I've missed. What exactly do you mean? You know, Monica, I've been out of touch for so long. Oh. It's going to be a, a massive undertaking, putting my life back together. How do you plan to go about it? I only wish I knew. I've lost eight years. If I had that back, I'd be a doctor the same as you two, doing what I was meant to do. I guess that's the hardest thing for me to accept, but I simply have to. Well, at least you won't be in want of money. <laughs> you would think that would be some consolation, wouldn't you? Uh, I gather it's not. It can't bring me personal satisfaction. No, maybe not, but it also can pay the rent while you go and search for it. Oh. You know, there are other things that you can do that are related to medicine. I never really thought about that. I suppose I should. But of course you feel that that would be second best. Would I be wrong? No. So what are your options? Going to medical school, I guess, would be just too difficult at this point. Well, yes, I can see that. I mean, it'd be rather tough going back to school after all these years. <laughs> Besides, can you see somebody like myself in with all those kids? I mean, I'd be 
all alone. I wouldn't know anyone wherever I was. Unless, of course, if you were here. I mean, here in Port Charles, then you would know us. I mean, from that standpoint, it would certainly make it easier, wouldn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, Alan, what are you getting at? I'm saying it is a possibility. Grand might choose to go to medical school here in Port Charles. What? General Hospital is a teaching facility, you know. It's one of the best in the country. Is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, 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 excuse me, that's impossible. Why? Well, for lots of reasons. I mean, one, the, the waiting list to get into med school at General Hospital is a mile long. It would take years to get in. Not necessarily. Helen. I'm serious. I do have a certain amount of influence there, and I could certainly pave the way for you, Grant, if you wanted to study there. You would. I'm overwhelmed. You're not the only one. Well, just think about it. If you do choose to study here in Port Charles, I could certainly make it easy on you. I never really considered staying here in Port Charles. Makes uh, sense to me. <clears throat> Alan, excuse me, but don't you think that uh, Mr. Putman uh, should make up his own mind? Of course he should. I mean, I don't want to push you into anything. Oh, no, not at all. Quite the contrary, your offer is... is most appealing. Yes, well, if I were you, I would give it a great deal of thought. I mean, I, you certainly don't want to make a snap judgment and do something that you might regret. I don't think you'd regret it at all. Nor do I, Alan. I mean, it's not as though I have numerous other offers to consider. And yours is most generous. I might just take you up on that. I might enjoy living here in Port Charles after all. Thank you. You show a lot of potential. I don't usually take on students myself, but in your case, I'd be willing to make an exception. Thank you, Mr. Hoving. I was planning on leaving Port Charles very soon. I have to get back to New York. Roland has so much for me to do. But I'd hate to see so much potential go to waste. It would be a shame. So, Miss McTavish, if you're willing to apply yourself and work harder than you ever have before, I'm willing to stay here and personally supervise your advanced lessons. Oh, I'm honored. How many more lessons do you think it will take before I'm ready to audition for Roland Chilbert? Well, that depends entirely upon you. The faster you progress, the sooner you'll get to audition for him. Oh, I see. So, shall I plan on staying in town? I, I, I don't know. I don't think you realize what a rare opportunity this is. I mean, Matthew Irving doesn't offer to work with just anyone. Oh, I, I do understand, and I'm really grateful. It's just that, um... Would your rates be the same as Mr. Hannibal? I could consider that. And how many more lessons do you think I'd need? Why don't we evaluate that the next time? It's just, I hope I can raise enough money, you know, to go all the way with this. Do you have any idea of how many girls in your position would do absolutely anything to be able to afford even an hour of this man's time? You're right. I don't want you to think that I'm not willing to make the sacrifice. Good. I look forward to working with you. Uh, here, I'll help you with that. Oh, no, it's okay. Really. No, I don't mind. Oh. Taping the lessons, Margaret? Whatever for? I hope you have a damn good explanation for this. Are you up here? Holly? Hmm. Well, I guess you won't be needing this any longer. The goal is gold when the Olympic tradition continues February 6th on ABC. Tomorrow, Stacy goes undercover as an aerobic dancer to uncover the truth about a deadly workout program on T.J. Hooker. Then the ship's new photographer doesn't know his film from his flash, but he zooms in on Doc's and Gopher's girls on the love boat. After, Rourke fights to keep a young woman from becoming the victim of a madman on Fantasy Island. Can Derek help Chris face her future? Stay tuned for The Edge of Night, next on ABC.